Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode here at Catholic Table Talk Podcast. This is a podcast where everything Catholic is on the table again this week. Thank you for joining me again this week. This episode is brought to you by Dr. Katrina Wing. Dr. Katrina is a physician, a medical doctor. How she See how she can help you, your family, and your community out at mdkatrina.com. MD, mdkatrina.com. Thank you for Dr. Wing. For sponsoring today's show. If you'd like to become a sponsor of the show, please email us at CatholicTT at gmail.com. Again, it's CatholicTT at gmail.com, the official flagship email of Catholic Table Talk. And the easiest way to get a hold of us for speaker and guest, uh, excuse me, speaker and show requests as well. So, also, if you don't know which platform we are on besides the one that you are watching or listening to right now, please. Go to our webpage, it should be in the links below, and click on that link. And on our webpage, it has all of our links that we are on, on the platforms. And we do stuff a little bit different on each one. We try to keep up to date on all of them. Um, we do the best we can. So please go like, follow, subscribe, hit the notification button, everything on um, each platform. So we're also just launched on Gitter, uh the app Gitter. Um, and also Truth Social, so go follow us on those channels as well. Our right, episode 99 today, folks. Man, it's been a joy. Um, episode 100 is so close. It's next week. And, uh, yeah, so episode 99 is by myself this week. Um, we're going to talk about kind of the holy orders um, and re- religious life and how and why. I mean, most importantly, why should you or someone you know or you should talk to someone you know about going into holy orders or religious life? So, very cool show. Uh, I was going to do this a couple weeks in advance, but um, because of some situations, we had to move the show up a little bit. So, um, not quite as prepared as I was hoping to be, but we'll give the best shot. So... With that being said, um, yes. Make sure, yep, still going. So with that going on, um, there's kind of like five areas I want to talk to you about today. Um, and that's, and that's really just kind of my life about how the interests I have in holy orders and, um, even just religious life. And maybe how, maybe they're the same as yours. Or a friend or someone that you know. Um, what are like the holy orders and religious life like? You know what goes in them, and uh, talk about my or my trip to, I took recently to a uh, seminary, and then uh, also just kind of talk about, um, just kind of talk about the visit. So, oh, excuse me, I should talk about kind of not mixed up but anyway. We'll kind of go with the flow here. That's what I mean. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess, of course, overall, I guess I meant to say, why should you or someone you know consider about holy orders or re- religious life? Well, I mean, first of all, we should get one f- thing clear up right away is holy orders are only meant for men. Um, so holy orders, you can be a priest, a deacon, a bishop, um, pope. But you, um, women are not allowed in holy orders, um, unless, of course, I mean, people always say we should have a woman, a uh, priest, um, I don't think that's really ever going to happen, just because there's always been a lot of pushback about that, and that's not, never really been the, uh, Catholic Church's teaching, so I don't think that's ever going to happen, um, so you can be a priest, a deacon, or a bishop, or like I said, or pope. Um, of course, being a, just some general clarifications on a website I have on right now. Uh, they are baptized, conformed, and practicing woman Catholic men who, with a desire to serve God and his people as a priest, must possess the following general qualifications. They must uh, profess in faith and, and love for Christ and his church. Um, like Father Mike Smith so he says, you got to love God, and then you got to love the Catholic Church. You can't just love one or the other. You have to love them both. 
um, good moral character, a high school diploma with a favorable academic abilities, um, emotional balance and maturity, good physical health. Um, you know, we have a lot of older getting, um, kind of retiring priests, um, who's still in great health. I know a lot of retired priests who are still in great health, as far as I know. But, uh, yeah, we need good physical priests to carry out, especially the peop the ones who are not retired, because if you're retired, you got so much less stuff you gotta worry about in your parish, and, and you have to worry about anything, not like, uh, parish meetings and all that stuff. Um... Physic, uh, yeah, philosophical readiness and capacity to p pursue a sustained long commitment life because it is kind of giving up your life to serve God. A deep in habit of prayer and balance to vote in your life, maturity to recognize and willingness to respond to the needs of others once you're serving God and you're kind of serving, shepherding the other uh, congregation of your parish. Um, we, we, Willingness to serve, willingness to serve in the manner to which he is called by God through his bishop. Again, if he gets the call, hey, you gotta move. You gotta be willing, willing to do that. Maybe that happens five times in four years. Maybe it happens two times in fifteen. I don't know. Uh, developing spirit of detachment that helps him be in the world, but not of the world, and freedom to enter the state in life. So that's kind of the priest side of it. I mean, the deacon, um, I'm not going to try to spend too much on it, but deacons may uh, baptize and proclaim the gospel, preach the homily, assist the bishop or priest in the celebration of the Eucharist. Um, deacons also assist at and, at, and they can uh, do blessing, blessings, marriages, and preside at funerals. Um, deacons are expected to support themselves and their families. They exist in the secular world as Christ the servant. So basically they don't they don't make money off the uh off the church. Or not off the church, but they don't make money from the church. They make money doing regular jobs like uh you and me. So they might be a mechanic, they might be um you know, a telephone, um internet service handyman, um so they can be do a lot of things and of course, um yeah, and then uh, bishops, so, which is basically, you know, you have your diocese, and the bishop oversees the diocese, um, and they get to travel throughout the diocese, take confirmations, um, celebrate the cruise and mass at the uh, cathedral, um, all this other, all the other great stuff that bishops do as well. And then, of course, if you're bishop you're going to get call, get a call from the pope probably saying hey you need to come you, know, you gotta go to this diocese and this state now so uh that's a that's a big big commitment in yourself right there too if you know uh coming from if you were up in alaska and you could go into new york city uh that's quite a difference so but yeah so holy orders is basically just kind of you know, for men, um, but why, why should you, um, I guess I can talk about this later on, too, and about my life's journey, but I think, I think it's good just to kind of meditate on it, um, just because, again, we're kind of our court, college to sort of God, right, um, and if we're not really, if we're not really bringing that to him in prayer in our everyday life, you know, we we're probably not going to do the thing that he has set for us in our lives. Um, and just like you're trying to serve God the best you can every day, so why not think about serving God for your whole life in a holy, in a more religious life, let's just say. Um, put them all together and say more of a religious, um, ordained life. So, I mean, why not? If it's not unusual... Actually, there's more people who you think they are thinking about pursuing uh, vocations to holy orders or re religious life. Um, you can probably ask quite a few high school students at your church, and I'm sure, hopefully, probably half of them would be like, "Yeah, I thought about it. I'm open to it." So, basically, 
if you're scared about, hey, I, I, I can't, I'm thinking about this, but I don't really want to do it, I'm just going to be open to that. And like I said, the biggest why to me, though, um, is this, is that we need more religious people in the world today, in our country, um, in our states, in our communities. We need more people who will take on, who will carry out God's um I should, should I say, yeah, leadership, but I mean, you know, um, yeah, just kind of lead us in the faith here on earth, um, we need more people like that, so that's the biggest why, if you thought about it, um, I would highly recommend you kind of going more into it, if not, that's okay, um, I'm sure God might call you a little bit later, or he might bring up a little bit later, but again, why, because why not, I mean, I'll call yourself God, so, you know, and I've heard so many priests and people say it's a good life, um, you know, being in religious life, holy words, it's a good life. People think of it as, you know, kind of lots of hard work, and it is, but it's a very good life, they say. Um, so, that's the why. So again, what's holy orders? I mean, we kind of talked about this moving on. Um, there's a priest, deacon, bishop, pope, uh, just for men. Um, and I say I'll talk about it maybe a little bit later. But what is religious life? You know, I mean, religious life is nuns, sisters, monks, and brothers are all known as religious. While decades of serving God, in a special role, religious do not receive a sacrament of holy orders, rather, like take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Excuse me, obedience. Yeah, I, I know how to say it, I just gonna say it right there. A nun is a woman who lives in a monastery as a complimentary person, as a general rule, her work is for the world, not in the world. Uh, she works and prays within a monastery, most often with her community, she, she will be called sister. Sister, a Catholic sister, a religious woman who lives on vocation, directed to serving, evangelizing the world, is different from a nun, though. She, a sister, works in the world, taking the gospel wherever she goes. She may live in a con, uh, convent or live on her own but she lives in some form of community on a mission. So a nun and a sister, you hear them say, you know, nuns and sisters, hey, um, you kind of hear the two together, which actually, that's kind of misinterpreted um, to a degree because, I mean, she can be called sister, but there's also different Catholic sisters that you shouldn't get confused with nuns because Again, there is a difference between a nun sister and then just a Catholic sister. Same thing with kind of, you know, mucks and brothers and all that. And we'll kind of get into right here. A muck is a person who lives with other mucks in community. These communities tend to be self-significant. Um, they serve the church through prayer, meditation, and offering the fruits of the time with God. A muck's work and prayer a primary to the world. A monk may or may not be a priest. You hear, you know, monk priest or um, not monk priest, you know. So yeah, um, actually, uh, we went to I went to a retreat in our diocese a couple of few years back, and uh, one of the one of the uh, priests there was a monk. It was a monk priest. Um, you know, he heard confessions. He helped celebrate the mass at the retreat. Um, and he, I can't remember how many, um, other mucks he lived with, but, uh, I believe he was a muck, anyway, maybe he was a brother, either or, but, yeah, he lived in the community with, I can't remember how many other mucks in just one building, so, I mean, the always, they have community around them, um, they, you know, carry out, um, the will of God in, in the community, I mean, they show the church, and, I mean, again, through prayer, meditation, and offering the fruits of the time with God. So, yeah. Um, a brother, on the other hand, a brother may or may not live with 
other brothers, but typically does not live in a monastery. He tends to stay within a defined geographical area and serve, it, and serve within it. His work and prayer are primary in the world. So, basically, he, he can live in the in a monastery. He doesn't have to. But basically, I mean, he basically can say, okay, I will, maybe, maybe, he, I mean, to me, that's not really a bad thing. I mean, he tends to stay within a defined area and sort of within it. So basically, it's like, you know, do you, um, you know, it could be your, um, what I mean, you, you know, where you grew up, you know, for example, you could sort of that. Or it could be, maybe uh, you want to move west, on the west coast of America, or the east coast, maybe you want to go up to Canada, maybe you go down to Mexico, wherever, right, maybe go to Europe, I don't know, but you have a defined location of where you kind of want to live, and then you sort of, you kind of preach, and you work, uh, you do what you're called to do in that area. So that's, I think that's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, and of course, this is um, from the St. Francis de Sales Woman Catholic Church, um, Tucson, Arizona, the article. Um, it says, of course, if you're considering relig religious life, they have a contact person, um, uh, Diocese of Tucson Vocations Office. That's for Arizona. But also, so if you're thinking about holy orders or uh, religious life, contact your local diocese staff and uh, just kind of talk to them about it. Um, we have a very great vocations director here in the diocese that I am. Um, he came. He was leaking at our church before he became a priest, and we just kind of know him through, you know, the years he's been a priest, and uh, he, we're very happy and blessed and. Um, to have them in our diocese. So reach out to um, your vocations director for your diocese if you're interested um, with that. So, anyway, so now let's kind of move on to some more other stuff, just personal quickly here. Um, so just kind of talk about kind of my life through what I'm thinking about holy orders just because in a little bit I mean I am thinking about maybe becoming a priest maybe this is five years down the road maybe I'm not a priest yet maybe I am who knows um but basically ever since I was little my brother and I you know I've always been kind of open to it um and my brother actually said he was too which I did not really know um we used to play church at in our home um and our mom and dad used to bedroom they have a they had a great big you know bedroom so that was ideal for us we put the stuffed animals on their bed we had a nice big table we used for the altar Sam, my brother Sam was a deacon I was the priest so I thought naturally if I become a priest he's gonna become a deacon but he said no nah, I actually thought about being a, a priest actually I'm like oh cool but anyway um so yeah we I mean we used to do that weekly up to like four times a week Every week, we used to almost say Mass like four times a week on very good occasion, uh, on a very good um, week, I should say. Some weeks, of course, you're going to one, but uh, yeah, I mean, we used to say Mass up to four times a week, every week for, it was quite often, for like a year, maybe more, something like that. So, yeah, I always, just growing up, I always had a good love for the priesthood. Serving at Mass is a great way to kind of get behind the scenes of what a priest does before Mass. You can kind of learn serving a lot at Mass. You can kind of learn tips and tricks of what they do and what stuff means. Um, just kind of that stuff when you're serving with a priest, especially if you have the same priest for a very long period of time. Um, actually, just the other night, I was serving Mass, weekday Mass, and, uh, you know, a uh, retired priest was filling in, and he's like, before Mass, he came, he said to me, he's like, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, it's kind of fun to see how each priest does it differently. I'm like, exactly. Um, maybe, you know, like for me, for example, we had the same priest for many years, and that's who I really started serving with, and, um, 
you know, he was kind of one of my, I guess you say, role models to go after him because just we saw with him so many times, and I kind of loved the way he did the mass. Nothing against anyone else. Um, but you get used to it, and you kind of have a sense of connection to it. Like, I could see myself doing that. But like the retired priest said the other night, like, hey, everyone does it different. I'm like, actually, Father, I, I know. I'm like, you know, I see it when you're here. I, I see it when my pastor does it, my other priest does it, um, other priests do it. I'm like, and as a server, you kind of got to be thinking of that, and you kind of think how cool that is. So anyway, um, again, I always thought about being a priest. Not really feeling getting the cow just yet. Um, I think it's been kind of, it's been close more than it has been the past few years. But nothing yet. as a for sure yes or a for sure no. Um, and one of the reasons why I was hoping to find out was, and this is the last talking point here I want to share with you, is just kind of a few weeks back during let still, um, we, my... Uh, one of my priests and uh, Father Gabriel, he's been on the show multiple times, and a couple others, and our, our vocations director, hopefully have him on the sh show soon, Father Doug, um, and a couple others from around our parishes, our Catholic community, and um, another great guy from down in St. Cloud. Um, we're on a seminary visit to the Immaculate Heart of Mary Seminary in uh, Winona, Minnesota. And if you've never been to Winona, um, it's a beautiful place, beautiful bluffs and everything. Um, so, it's a nice seminary, kind of nestled in the bluffs, uh, right on the river there. Um, not right on the river, but very short walk from it. So, I thought, when I went, I was hoping to kind of get the uh, sense of, okay, Lord, this is this is either going to be a yes, or it's going to be a no when I walk out of here. It's going to be, this is it, you know. 20 plus years of, well, I should say more like, since I can remember, 15 plus years of thinking I might become a priest. This is the weekend that I know it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. Um, and just kind of going through everything there, getting to know all these uh, seminarians and just a lot of different people, different dioceses there, diocese of Gary and in Indiana was there, diocese of Green Bay, Wisconsin, diocese of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Rapid City, South Dakota. Um, I see the quirks of Minnesota, I think maybe one more, but, uh, yeah. So, it's just, it was just good just to go and visit the seminary, um, just to see what it was like. And for the most part, at least at that seminary, it's like any other college that you go to. For the most part, besides really kind of focusing on, on prayer time and everything, um, at the at the uh, appropriate times and the uh, appropriate days. So, but for school work, for everything else, it, it's basically like regular college almost until, you know, you, you kind of graduate up to the first level on to the second level. Um, so just in brief, just kind of, it didn't happen. I uh, still don't know what I'm going to do. And that's what I learned there is like, you're not going to know. It's, it's more of a calling. It's more, you know, it's... Uh, it's God's time, it's not your time, so if you walk in here thinking you're going to know, you're not going to know. Um, just be open to that. Which, I mean, I've, you know, a couple guys, or a guy or two said, you know, I think this is maybe not really for me. So, I mean, a couple of them had a feeling. I don't really know if, know if I knew it for sure or not, but they're like, you know, I think I'm being called to marriage or I'm being called to something else. Maybe single life, I, I'm not. I'm not being caught. I don't think I'm being caught to be a priest, which is totally fine. But the point is, they go, they went, we went and figured, we went and kind of saw for ourselves what it's like and if we would want to pursue it, or if we want to pursue, pursue any other, you know, holy orders or religious life. So, my challenge to you is, if whether um, if you're of if you're a guy thinking about becoming a priest, deacon, bishop, uh, monk, or brother, highly encourage you to kind of go visit um, a couple places, uh, the local, um, the lo the most, uh, sh should I say, the closest place to you, like seminary, to go visit, because, uh, 
I mean, God kind of seen and try out and get to meet the seminaries, get to hear their different backgrounds. And for me, I heard a lot of stories just like me. So I'm like, okay, like, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not feeling being cowed yet to the priest, but that's pretty, that's pretty cool that it's like the same grow-up story as mine. So we'll, we shall see with that. But, you know, if you're a woman, go. If you're thinking about it, go. Look at religious uh, life uh, colleges, places to go to. Because, again, you probably will have a little bit better feeling to a degree towards it. Um, but also, just like for me, like it was really special to go during the seminary visit. And if, uh, because it's during Let. Um, you know, I was having okay let up until that point, but I wasn't having an awesome let. Where after that, I think, you know, it was like the fourth Sunday let, so about half, it was around halfway through let. So the second half of let was definitely better because I went, I got to spend more time in prayer, which I wasn't really doing. Um, I kind of got to get renewed faith, I get, you know, renew, um, kind of the way up, the way I pray, the, uh, just kind of the sense of the faith that you have in prayer. Um, I got a lot from that. So, again, I mean, it doesn't have to be the Immaculate Heart of Mary Seminary in Winona, Minnesota, if you're going to become a priest. But uh, seriously, uh, just think about going to places like that to just to see if you're very interested. Because who knows? Like you said, I mean, again, I should say, like, it doesn't really happen all the time, but, I mean, like the priest said, though, just don't walk in thinking, okay, well, this is the sign point, you know, just let the Holy Spirit work through you, and see for yourself, you know, I mean, just, it's gonna say, okay, Lord, this is it, this is, this is, I'm here, show me, you know, that's not gonna happen, if you're open to it, if you're kind of, you know, walking around campus, it's kind of like, wait, you know, going to college, you Maybe get kind of more people get a feeling wide way than others, so it's really all that. So, anyway, so that's my challenge. Go out to a place like that. Talk to your vocations director if you're interested. Talk to your pastor about it if you're interested. Um, if you're in high school and a faith formation class and you're listening to this, or like you're going to a faith formation, uh, bring up to your maybe a catechist. And, uh, like I said, if you're thinking about becoming a deacon, talk to your local deacon. You have to be 45 years or older to become a deacon. Which I have some, I don't know, maybe disagreements about, but that's another show for another time. But, I mean, actually, like I said, if I don't become a priest, I, I am seriously, I mean, I am maybe becoming a deacon. Um, you know, of course, a bishop, you gotta become a priest for us to do that. Um... Or become a nun, or a sister, or a brother, or a monk. You know, so go out. Uh, you, you can't you can't start by just uh, wondering about it and having worry or anxiety or I mean just like I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. Um, again, you gotta start someplace. So go out with that. And like I said, why, 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 and why do you tell people about? going out if you have someone they know who is considering it because we're all called to serve God and this is a beautiful way of doing it if God is calling you to do it and we all want to do God's will in our lives right um so you know and maybe if you're if God is calling you to be something else um and in your stage in life right now um try to you know maybe look up uh, what a sister or nun does and maybe you can apply some of that to your daily life. I mean, you're not going to be a sister or nun, but, you know, what kind of, what do they do in prayer? What kind of meditation do they do every day? What type of, all that. It's it's all great information. So, great stuff to know, too. So, anyway, so I hopefully, and like I said, the biggest why is because of world or country or states, or na- uh, communities, or neighborhoods need more um, devote um, holy order men and 
religious life people in the world today. Uh, so, it's been a steady increase, decrease, not excuse me, a steady decrease. And how, so if you if you're thinking about it, be open to it because we do need people like you. Because without without religious people and holy order men, and let's just say ten years, the world is going to be a very scary place. If it, I mean, it's always scary, but it's going to be a very more scary place if we're still here in ten years. So there you go. All right, everyone. Take kept you here long enough. Thank you again. If you have any questions or feedback, please drop them in the comments below. Um, love to hear what you have to, what you think about the show or about your story. If you have, if you're experiencing through this, um, if there was something I did not touch on, and uh, you would like to, like I said, kind of like to me to touch touch on more, maybe another episode or something, please drop that below as well. Of course. Um, Speak on show requests, CatholicTTNGMR.com. Also, big announcement. Of course, this is episode 99, so episode 100 next week. What are we going to do? Well, you have to tune in to find out. So, God willing, we'll see you next week for episode 100. Can't believe it. Thank you for your continued support of the show. Without you, it would not be possible. So, thank you for that. All right, everyone, go to the sacrament, stay in state of grace. Uh, God willing, we'll see you next time, next week, for episode 100 on Catholic Table Talk Podcast for over, for 99, hopefully, for 100 shows where everything Catholic is on the table. <laughs>